Good morning friends my name is Hardrika and today we are going to listen a story named Pinocchio it is a famous and very interesting story it is written by Carlo Collodi so let's start the story once there lived a woodcarver named Geppetto he desperately wanted a son so one day he got hold of a tree branch and started carving it in the shape of a little boy you shall be my little boy and i shall call you pinocchio he said and seriously set out to work carving out each detail carefully on the branch when the eyes of the puppet were done they moved and stared at him ugly wooden eyes Why do you stare at me? asked Geppetto. There was no answer. When he carved the mouth, the puppet started making faces at him. Then it laughed at him. Stop that, you naughty boy! scolded Geppetto. The mouth stopped laughing, and but it stuck out its tongue. I won't stop! cried Pinocchio. Geppetto was stunned to see his wooden puppet speak. "You can talk!" exclaimed Geppetto. He went on with his work. After the mouth, he made the chin, the neck, the shoulders, the stomach, the arms, and the hands. As he was giving the puppet a final touch, he felt his wig being pulled off. "Give me my wig back!" ordered Geppetto. Naughty Pinocchio began dancing around with the wig. Pinocchio, it is not a time to dance," said Geppetto. "You need a good night's rest, and then you will be going to school tomorrow with real boys. In school, you will learn many things, including how to behave," went on Geppetto. The next morning, Pinocchio went to school. After school he stopped to watch a puppet show. I can dance better than these puppets and do without strings, said Pinocchio and began to jump around. He climbed onto the stage. The puppet master was very annoyed and ordered him off the stage. However, when he saw the crowd cheering, he handed Pinocchio 5 copper coins. Take these coins and go home," ordered the puppet master. Pinocchio pocketed the coin and coins and was on his way home. It wasn't long before he met a lame fox and a blind cat. Hearing about his good luck, the clever animals made a plan to at once. They decided to act as if they were his friends. Come with us and we'll teach you how to turn these copper coins into gold," lied the cat. "We know a magic tree where you can plant your coins. The next day you'll find that they have turned into gold," the cat went on. "Show me where," said the amazed Pinocchio. The fox and the cat took Pinocchio to the deserted place far off a little and pointed to an oak tree. He buried his coin in the front and marked the place with a stone. "Good work!" exclaimed the cat. Then they proceeded to a nearby inn to have dinner. After a hearty meal, the fox and cat slipped away unnoticed. They dressed themselves as thieves and lay in wait for Pinocchio to at, at uh, behind the tree. As Pinocchio dug up the dug up the coins, the thief attacked him suddenly. Your money or your life! cried the thieves. But Pinocchio had held the coins between his teeth and didn't say a word. There was nothing the fox or cat would do to make him talk, so decided to tie a rope around the puppet's neck and hang him from the oak tree until he talked. You'll hang like this until you decide to talk, the thieves told Pinocchio as they ran away. The blue fairy who lived nearby overheard everything. From her hill window, he she saw Pinocchio hanging from the oak tree in the wood. She ordered Ruffus, her dog, to bring the puppet back to her castle. Pinocchio was made to sit down. 
Where did you hide the coins? The fairy asked Pinocchio in a sweet voice. I lost them, answered Pinocchio. And what do you think happened next? Pinocchio's nose began to stretch and grow louder. What's happening to my nose? cried Pinocchio. Every time you tell a lie, your nose will grow and when you tell the truth, it will reduce to its normal size, replied the fairy. You can become a real boy only if you learn to be honest, brave and kind. The blue fairy asked Pinocchio to take his coins and go home and do not stop anywhere for any reason. On his way back, Pinocchio met Lazy Carlo. Why don't you come to talk with me? asked Carlo. Nobody studies there and you can play all day. What's more, the place is full of games, case, candies and circus. Forgetting his promise to the fairy, Pinocchio gave in and agreed to go to Thailand with Carlo and his group of boys. However, what the boys didn't know was that if they were naughty, they would be turned into donkeys and trained for a circus. So, they jumped into the wagon and went to Thailand. In the beginning, it was great fun and they all enjoyed themselves. There was no lesson and nobody was even talk about, allowed to talk about school. This is good life, exclaimed Pinocchio joyfully. I knew you would love it here, Pinocchio, said Carlo happily. Thanks, Carlo, said Pinocchio. And just imagine a teacher had asked me to keep away from you. He added, remembering his day in school. The days went by until finally one day Pinocchio woke up with a nasty shock. He raised his hand to touch his head and what do you think he found there? A pair of long hairy ears go in the place the ears Jepito had carved. That wasn't all. The hairy ears grew longer and longer each passing day. Pinocchio tried to hide them by wearing a cap. He then went to look for Carlo and found him in the same state. The boys started laughing at each other, but after a while, a strange thing happened. They started braying and found themselves all on fours. They had grown into donkeys. When the wagon driver in Thailand heard the braying, he rubbed his hand for joy, for now he had two donkeys to sell. Carlo was sold to a farmer and Pinocchio to a circus master. Life as a donkey was hard. There was nothing to eat but hay. Poor Pinocchio was beaten every day until he could perform the circus tricks, tricks properly. This drove him lame. The circus master then threw him into the sea. Once in the water, the donkey trail fell off and Pinocchio got his feet and ears back. He swam happily for a long time in the sea. However, his adventure was far from over. He could see a giant whale coming towards him. The whale opened its jaws and Pinocchio tried to swim away. But alas, when the water gushed into the whale's open mouth, Pinocchio got along with other of small fishes. Down the whale's throat, Pinocchio went. All this action made the puppet feel quite faint. When he came back to his senses, he was in darkness. He crawled along a path and tried, started to cry himself. Suddenly, he noticed a plain light. He saw it was a flame in the distance. Who's there by the light? called Pinocchio, his voice echoing. Pinocchio, is that you? asked the tired voice. Father, you are alive! Pinocchio cried happily. Weeping for joy, they hugged each other and related their adventures. I searched for you everywhere, said Jepito. When I couldn't find you on land, I made a boat to look you for in sea. But unfortunately, the whale swallowed me and I've been waiting to get out since then, he added. Pinocchio wasn't scared anymore. He helped Jepito build a big raft that would hold both of them. 
When the raft was finished, Pinocchio Tacker tickled the whale. Hold tight, father. When he sneezes, he'll blow us out of here. Pinocchio exclaimed. And just like Pinocchio had predicted, the whale sneezed and released Geppetto and Pinocchio into the sea. Home at last, Geppetto tucked Pinocchio in his bed. Pinocchio, today you were brave and honest, said Geppetto. You are my son and I love you. Pinocchio suddenly remembered what the fairy had told him. Father, now that I have proven myself, I am waiting for something to happen. He whispered as he went off to sleep. The next morning, Pinocchio was in for a pleasant surprise. He came running down the steps and waving his arms. He, he ran to Geppetto and shouted, Look, father, I am a real boy. Geppetto gave him a tight hug and said, that's right, my child. When naughty boys became good, their looks changed along with their lives. Thank you.